Okay, so when an earthquake happens, what the ground the ground surface moves, a fault ruptures. And what we want to know very quickly is where that earthquake happened, how big the earthquake was, how much the ground moved, which different communities were affected by the shaking, and perhaps how much damage took place in that earthquake. Now we can get some of that information from conventional seismology, which involves listening to the seismic waves coming from that earthquake. Seismology is fantastic in terms of being able to respond very quickly to an event, so you just have to wait for the seismic waves to come to the instruments on the ground. But what it's not very good at is giving us precise information about which fault was responsible for an individual earthquake. And that's where radar can come in. So if you're imaging an area regularly with a satellite radar, what you can get is maps of exactly how the ground moved in that earthquake. And we can identify using those data which bits of fault moved. We can use that information to build models of how the ground moved at depth. And we can use those models to make estimates of how much shaking took place in the earthquake. What's also important, once we've got those data, is it enables us to work out exactly which bits of a fault failed in an individual earthquake. So after the earthquake in Nepal in 2015, we wanted very quickly to know how much of the thrust fault that underlies the Himalayas, we wanted to know how much of that thrust fault had slipped during the earthquake. The satellite radar data gave us that information very, very quickly. So within about three days of the earthquake, Sentinel-1 had acquired its first image following the event. And by looking at that image and comparing it to an image acquired before the earthquake using a technique called radar interferometry, we could see which parts of the ground went up and which parts went down. And we could use that to work out which parts of the fault slipped. And really importantly, what we discovered in that earthquake was the shallowest part of the fault hadn't slipped in the earthquake. The shallowest part was locked and uh, was still there, ready to release strain in a future earthquake. So although there was a major seismic hazard, a, major, a large amount of energy had been released during the fall earthquake, the radar data gave us really precise information on what was still to come in the future. 